just want to welcome you all to uh, Straight With Truth here on Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host for the evening, Elder Donnie. Hallelujah. And I greet even each and every last one of you, saints of the Most High Yah, those of you who are called to be saints, those of you who are scattered abroad. Hallelujah. Blessings to you all. Hallelujah. As always, I like to give praise and honor where it's due. Give all praise and honor, first and foremost, to the Most High Yah. Um, um, just grateful for him and uh, all that he, he's done and all that he's doing and all that he will do for us. Hallelujah. For without him, we could do nothing. Hallelujah. also want to give honor to our beloved shepherd, the Honorable Pastor Charles Dow Jr., and to all uh, the pastors here in Israel, Pastor uh, Corey Phillips, as well as Pastor Joe Fox, uh, all affiliated uh, Straight Way Truth, as well as uh, Teacher McKnight, uh, Deacon Bell, and all of the elders and the heads of the assemblies. Hallelujah. Uh, glory to the King, which myself am an elder, and it is an honor and a privilege to be able to serve you, Israel. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. So um, I tell you what, thanks for a beautiful day. Uh, glad to be here, glad to be in the land of the living, and um, just just thankful that I'm clothed in the right frame of mind. And I pray, uh, in all honesty, saints, that you all are encouraged as well. Uh, I really, truly hope that you all are encouraged. Uh, if you only look at uh, the many blessings uh, and the things that Yah has done for you uh, thus far in your life, it's so much to be grateful for and to give joy and honor and uh, all the glory and praise to the Most High Yah for it. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. But Satan ain't going to stop this. Glory to the King. I'll tell you what. I'd like to start off reading uh, Psalms from Psalms 19. And uh, I'll go ahead. Psalms 19, starting at verse 7 through 11. And it says that the law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Hallelujah. So we thank Yah for the law, for his instructions unto us, his people. We're the only ones who have these laws. We're the only ones that have Yahweh so uh, nigh unto us. Glory to the King. We are not without uh, instructions. We are not lost. Hallelujah. He was so mindful of us. He wanted to keep us away from, you know, the sins of the nations around us. He wanted us to be holy. He wanted us to be just, set apart completely from this world. And even now, in this day and hour that we're living in, that is the same in what he wants for us. To be set apart Hallelujah But the thing about it is We are warned Hallelujah We are are warned What not to do And in keeping of them There is great reward Hallelujah There's great reward So there's hope There's great hope for us Israel It truly is But um I want to say this uh, before I go ahead any further. I just really appreciate each and every last one of you who I had a chance to uh, hug and I had a chance to speak with you and uh, just to see you during the feast, during Passover, Unleavened Bread. Uh, it truly was a joy. And uh, especially the pre- uh, pleasant surprise of seeing Brother uh, Paul, Brother Ugly, made it through. I'm so grateful for you. And thank you for posting, uh, you know, co hosting. Uh, on each of these shows, brother, it's greatly appreciated, and I want to give thanks to you for that. And each and every last one of you for your kind words, words of encouragement, just to continue on. And uh, it truly uh, was an honor to see you all and to meet all of uh, the new uh, saints that are, are with us. Hallelujah! So glory to the King. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. But Yah is good, thanks. Uh, he really is. And, uh, you know, as I was getting myself prepared, you know, to come on here this evening just in prayer, you know, some things just will drop in my spirit. And I just got to just, just, just share it with you, just bring it out, you know. It may seem simple, but it, but it means so much. And, you know, we, we take a lot of things for granted. Um, we take a lot of things for granted. You know how much God has done for us, you know. And in, in the way it came to me, it was just that we are just so uh, ungrateful, you know, as a people, as a whole. We don't consider, you know, all that Yah has done. I mean, if we just look at, you know, where we are right now, and look where we come from, man, the garbage and the filth. He really has brought us out. And for us not to be grateful and for us not to, you know, really strive even harder, for us just to sit around and um, not fight against Satan's kingdom, be in agreement with, with, with these spirits and, and acting out, for us not to, to despise correction and the judgment that's been put forth, for us not to appreciate the fact that Yah is laying this thing out for us, clear, clear as day, uncut, answering our prayers. He's showing us, I mean, just yesterday, there was so much poured out to us, so much poured out to us, made it so plain and clear for us to understand. On whatever level that you may be on in this walk or in this journey, we don't appreciate it. We still have self-hatred. You realize you're hating the creator? You're made in his image, and you hate him. Do you realize you're sitting there, and you, you, you're comparing yourself with others. You're looking at what you have not done or, or, or where you're at in this walk or, or the age that he decided to bring you in. Do you realize what you're doing? You're showing him that you don't even appreciate it. Instead of being thankful, instead of being glad, you know, that you're not going down that path of death, that he restored unto you your true heritage and who you truly are. Sad thing. You're saying, I don't appreciate you. I don't appreciate the sacrifice. I don't appreciate you coming down here. You, yourself, atoning for the sins of Israel. It's just a sad thing, Israel. It is. You need to be more grateful. As a people, just just thank Yah for where you are at this point in time. First Thessalonians five and eighteen it says, "In everything, give thanks." You hear that? In everything, give thanks. No matter how bad you think it is, no matter how how far off you think you may be, just thank Yah. You can see clearly now. Thank Yah for where you're at now. For this is the will of Yah. In Christ Jesus concerning you. So whatever the outcome is, whatever it is, wherever Yah places you, whatever assembly you're a part of, whatever your lot is on that community, whatever your chores are, you know, wherever you, you are at right now in, in getting out of debt or, or reaching that goal, or you may be still in the city but you're working hard to get out, be content. It may be you, the only one in your family that he's chosen. You be thankful that it's you and not question, why not mama? Why not daddy? Why not my brother? Why not my favorite cousin? You be thankful that you, he chose you. You save yourself. Many people went on before us, our ancients that we read about. Blood was shed for us just to get the message out. Look at all that Yeshua had to go through, being despised of his own, his own creation for you and for you to turn around and to despise all of that and to show that you don't appreciate it. And the way you do it, you may not openly say it, but in your heart when you reject correction, 
the chastisement. When you reject this word that's coming forth and you don't act upon it and do the things that's necessary, you're showing that you don't appreciate Yah. But it says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of Yah in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know what I had to really refer back to this just, just recently. When when I found you know found out something that you know, and I, I said you know what let me why am I stressing over this why am I entertaining these thoughts that do not bring about peace. You know at the end of the day y'all know what he's doing and he know what we all can bear we, he know what we can handle. He's not gonna give us too much more than what we can handle, and we need to realize that. But it says, for this is the will of Yah in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give thanks always, saints. Always. Even where you are in this particular hour, where you're at now. Thanks. I've never seen a righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. You know, the whole world is in a total uproar. It's straight chaos all over the globe. But you, saints, you, Israel, you have hope. That is not your lot. The destruction that's coming upon this world That's not for you to be sitting around Moping and, and, and complaining Murmuring And being you know sad and depressed That's not for you Especially you that are here in this ministry With all that you have been given Because you refuse To take action Because you sit there And, and, and are in agreement with these spirits Because you sit there passive just lazy. And you're going to suffer the consequences of it. Luke 12 and 32 says, Fear not, little flock, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's in him to give you the kingdom. He has the best things set aside for you, Israel. The best. But it, it requires each and every last one of us to put forth effort to do work. We've been given much, so much is going to be required of us. And let us not be weary, saints. Let's not be weary in well doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we not become weak, if we do not lose focus on our goal, what we're trying to achieve. If we do not turn back, if we do not become offended, if we do not despise correction, we will reap, saints, a great reward. So I encourage you, saints, um, just move forward in this thing. Press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, bless you all, saints. But I tell you, man, uh, it just was real humbling to me, you know, just to know that. And um, but the Father is real gracious. He's been very good to us, very, very good to us. Um, and we need to just take advantage of the opportunity uh, that, that's set before us. We really do. And that, that's all of us. That's myself included. And, you know, it hits me first before anybody else, before I speak anything to you. And this is coming sincere. I'm not trying to put on, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, pretend to be anything before you. No, because I got a, a ways to go as well. And I tell you, I'm going to just tell you, man, that message just, it, it was just real sobering. It was real hard hitting on yesterday. Um, and it may not been, have been for you. It just depends on where you are, whatever's going on, if you even received it. You know, Pastor Dow even told us, you know, we don't even really know how to receive the word. We need to receive it with joy, man, with gladness. You know, if, if, if it applies to you, if it pertains to you, you know, the, the reproof, then take it with joy. Because you got to realize what y'all is doing. He's showing you your faults. He's showing you what you, you're messing up at or what you're missing the mark. Now, here's what you need to do to improve upon that. 
This is a golden opportunity that we have right now, saints, a golden opportunity. Hallelujah. But we got to die out to self. Of course we do. Got to die out to self. Uh, deny that flesh. Deny, deny the lust of the flesh and the desires and the cares of this life. We got to be honest and real with ourselves, not pretending and not putting on a show for others. Deceived in our own mind, in the spirit of our own mind. One thing about it is we can, you know, you can fool people, but you cannot fool Yah. He knows the heart. He knows the intent of the heart. And it's not just good enough just to be here, Shabbat after Shabbat, scripture study after scripture study, blog talk after blog talk, just here and listening. A lot is going to be required out of us, thanks. Pastor put it out, the warning out uh, a few weeks ago. You know, if you're sitting here, man, you and it's really not in your heart, the change is really not in your heart to, to, to do the will of Yah, you'd be better off just leaving because you, you're in a bad state. You know too much. You're learning too much. So uh, it's just a charge home for, for all of us, saints, to, to go higher. And if you've been noticing uh, the messages, look, Scripture study, Teacher Shane brought it out about, you know, the temple, about us being a tabernacle and how we need to be clean. Pastor Dow doing the same thing on yesterday, talking about how we need to clean out uh, these temples, and we, we want to look to the natural things first. We need to look at what's going on in the spiritual realm when things happen to us. Hallelujah. Because the things that are going on in our heart is going to be reflected on the outside, on our countenance, on our outward appearance. And our bodies, it's going to be seen. Hallelujah. But this is just, just a charge unto all of us, saints, just to start a little harder. I also going to get go higher, grow. Hallelujah. You know, the one thing I look at, uh, and it's very humbling, when I think about uh, the Apostle Paul, how he um, was this man, uh, a Pharisee, Pharisee of the Pharisees, and how much, you know, he knew the law. And um, all of his, his learning, his education in that, and, and, and just the wisdom that was imparted unto him. But even him, even he had to uh, abase himself. Even he had a certain measure that was given unto him. And I'm looking here at uh, 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12, starting at verse uh, 6. This says, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation. That was, that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought Yahweh thrice, that it might depart from me. So he had something that, was, that, 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 that buffeted him from being exalted high above measure. You know how we are as, as humans. You know, you know how it is. It's so easy for us to forget. You know, where our strength comes from. Who actually provides? Who gives us the wisdom? Who actually um, imparted these things unto us? Who actually is the blessing unto us? We quickly forget who we who, who who's the one who's really in charge. And so the apostle Paul had something that 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 buffeted him, that caused him not to be over exalted. Yeah, um, and he even went to the father. He even went to him three times that it might depart. But that wasn't the case. And in verse 9 of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12, it says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And that's Yah. That's Yeshua. His um Strength is made perfect in weakness. 
He can't do nothing with no haughty spirit, with no haughty individual to have it all figured out. He needs to be the one that's exalted. And it says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. It's the Apostle Paul. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, let's just be real. Do we really glory in our infirmities? Do we? Do we glory in in, in any weakness, in any um, sickness or, or feebleness? whether of the body or, or the mind, do we really uh, glory in our infirmities? That's, that's a good question. No, we don't. We don't. But the Apostle Paul, he knew. You see a, a very mature person and very, uh, you know, wise, a wise man here. That's the only way y'all can do work in us, saints. I mean, because we, we, we are too puffed up. We are we're real puffed up and prideful. And let it be told, you know, let us tell it. We 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 the reason for um, our condition, or we the reason why anything has happened in our lives. That's just the way of man by default. But it continues on, and it says, "I will rather." Let me read that again. It says, "Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmity, that the power of Christ may rest upon me." Therefore, I take pleasure, listen to this, in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress. For Christ's sake, now think about this. All these things I just mentioned, that I read that the Apostle Paul mentioned that he he, um, he take pleasure in, these are all things that we run away from. We run away from these things because they cause us to suffer. They cause us to be inconvenienced, a comfortable state to be in. It causes us to murmur, to complain about everything, all of these different uh, attributes here. But these are things that the Apostle Paul said he takes pleasure in. And you think about that the next time you're going through persecution, any type of infirmity. When you are being reproved, when you find yourself in a distressful situation, do you really give thanks? Do you really take pleasure in it? That's something to really, really think about. And it continues on to say, when I am weak, then am I strong. Isn't that something? When I am weak, because no longer am I depending on myself, no longer am I depending on what I can produce, but no, I need help. And that's the whole point of this tonight. We can't do nothing without Christ. We can't. Nothing, saints. Nothing whatsoever. Our whole mind, our whole focus, you know, needs to be transformed into making a habit of seeking out and, and relying on him. Upon doing things Because we're so You know Even myself I find myself And I, I made I said I'm a, I am make This year Make it a point And an effort Everything that I do To seek God Upon doing it And relying on him Trusting and believing On him When I ask for something According to his will When I'm seeking To be set free When I need healing Trusting in him Believing in him because I find myself, even myself, all too many times trying to, you know, uh, rely on uh, what I can produce. And there's very little, just to be honest with you, very little that I can really truly produce. I need y'all, saints. And I have to come, I had to come to the realization of that. I need y'all. You know, as simple as that might sound, or you may think, oh, I know this stuff yet. But do you practice it? Do you do it? Do you really trust in Yah? You know, I think that, and that's the reason I, I notice, you know, people will come to Shabbat after Shabbat and wouldn't, wouldn't seek deliverance, won't do what they need to do to get set free. 
A lot of that comes from no faith. You don't believe. You don't believe you could be set free from a generational curse. You don't believe that you could be set free, that your mind could be at peace. You don't really truly believe that your body can be healed from a disease that you had for so long that the world tells you that it's, it's incurable. Do you really believe this stuff? Because if so, you will be acting upon it. You will be running to that altar. You'll be crying out. You'll be repenting, doing whatever you need to do to get set free, to be clean. You will seek Yah if you believe that. But the Apostle Paul said, when I am weak, then am I strong. And the same for us, man. Only time we're going to become uh, strong is when we depend on highly on Yah for our soul help and our, and our, and our, uh, our deliverance. He's the one. He is our strength. Yahweh is our strength. Glory to the King. Psalms 28, 7 through 8. And it says, Yahweh is my strength and my shield. Now, I'm going to back up a little bit, all right? We know who this is. This is King David here. And we read throughout the Psalms, and, and it's a resounding theme throughout the Psalms, how he always seemed to put uh, Yah first. He always acknowledged where his strength came from. No matter how uh, strong and courageous, you know, he seemed, and, you know, when we read about him, no matter what he accomplished. You see, that's one of the things that really uh, draw, draw me to uh King David and, and his life and, and, and the, the account that we have of him. Out of all that he accomplished, and even all of the low points and the, the disappointments and the failures and the mistakes that you know we read about, he's human. He was human. He may seem as a madman to, to those who don't really comprehend what was going on, but you know if we peer into our own lives, we'll see wor- worse uh, things that, that that we've done. But, I, but when I look at him. He always knew how to abase himself and humble himself and give credit where credit was due, and he always knew where to run. He always knew where the source was. And that's what's so powerful about this great man, this this, this anointed man, um, one of our patriarchs. He knew where his strength came from. And he didn't have no problem showing us or uh, 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 run into that source. We, we see that. And I'll continue on. Psalms 28, 7, it says, Yahweh is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. You hear that? My heart trusted in him. And as a result of it, he was helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and my song will I praise him. Hallelujah. Not only do they believe in Yah, that Yah will come through for him. But see, this is the key point. point. He greatly rejoiced in Yahweh, and he gave praise unto him. He gave thanks unto Yah for what he did for him. And continuing on, verse 28 and 8 says, Yahweh is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Now, we're talking about the same King David, the one who said, from a youth, I have served Yah. The same one who slew Goliath. Y'all remember, the same one who slew 200 men and brought their foreskins to the king. The same one who slew 10,000s of men. He even knew that he could not do none of this on his own. None of it. And here we are today. We refuse to even fight, to even lift up a finger to fight. Not uh, Not only fight, but to trust in Yahweh that he would come through and deliver and be a man of his word. Trying y'all out to see, you know, whether so, whether or not it's so. 
We wouldn't even do it. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, it says, Trust in Yahweh with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. But it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Well, we got to we got to start trusting in Yah, uh, saints as a, as a people, believing in Him. Because if we lean to our own understanding, which is very very minimal, we can get nothing accomplished, nothing whatsoever. But our trust lies in Yahweh. Our strength lies in Yahweh. Hallelujah. And acknowledging Him, giving Him all the praise, and and lifting Him up, exalting Him. Hallelujah. He will direct our path. Glory to the King. Uh, let's see. We've got another one here from Psalms. <clears throat> Psalms 44 and 1. And it says, We have heard with our ears, O Yahweh. Our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days, in the times of old. Thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and planted them. Thou didst did it afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arms save them but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. Thou art my king, O Yahweh, command deliverances for Jacob. Through thee will we push down our enemies, through thy name, will we thread them under that rise up against us. I will not trust in my bow, so put no trust in himself. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. In Yah we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever. Selah. Glory to the King. Same should be for us, saints. We should boast in Yah. For he's the one. Hallelujah. He's our deliverer. He's our strong arm. Hallelujah. He's our high power. He is. Our everything. Glory to the King. So say, let us put our trust in Yah. Make a habit of doing so. Learning from our, uh, our, our, our ancients, the righteous ones. Hallelujah. I'm going to go take a break, saints, real quick. I'm going to come right back with you. Um, glory to the King. I'll be right back, saints. Uh, took a quick break, the ministry break. All right, and be right back with you. Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the broadcast that you're listening to right now. We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure that we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Charles Dowell, Jr. And Dowell is spelled D-O-W-E-L-L. 
506 Ellington Drive. Ellington is spelled E-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N. P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E. 37083. Again, our mailing address is Charles Dowell, Jr., 506 Ellington Drive, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. That's 1 615-688-3025. You may leave a message there and, be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to try to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry and as you apply the teachings of this ministry and growth within you, your family, and life as well, please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives, so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom, the King is coming. Glory to the King, hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, saints. Back here again, Elder Donnie here, <clears throat> on this edition of Block Talk Radio, Glory to the King. Um, I thank you all for being patient with me uh, at the beginning of the show, having a different uh, difficulty with the mic. I appreciate the feedback and uh, just being patient. I greatly appreciate it. I know that can be aggravating uh, to have to deal with, you know, that, that horrible sound like that. But uh, thanks for pressing through with me. Glory to the King. Um, but just moving on, just a quick recap of uh, things I've been talking about as I began just how, you know, as a people, we could be ungrateful and we could not really appreciating, you know, what Yah, the things that he's been doing for us. Hallelujah. And where he's brought us from. Um, And also how, you know, we need to put our trust uh, in Yah more. You know, it's so uh, common for us and it's easy for us to rely on our own intellect because we've just been, you know, doing it for so long. We, we've we always had to be the one to figure out, you know, our problems, situations in our lives. We had to be the one to, you know, to do it all. But I'm not saying it don't require us to do things. It does require us to, to do and uh, to put forth effort. Uh, hallelujah. But if we never seek Yah, and, and nothing that we do, if we never acknowledge him, um, if we never refer back to his word, if we never, um, we don't pay attention to, you know, the teachings and uh, the, the 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 word that we get, the, the correction and things of that nature, and we just go about and do what we want to do, I mean, then, I mean, we're pretty much saying in our own heart that, hey, I don't need a Yah, I don't need a, a Elohim, I don't need a, a Savior, I'm, I'm good. You know, we rely on uh, the things that we can produce, which I'm finding out that is very, very little that we can uh, actually offer to, to anyone. Uh, and, any, and this, I mean, we can't do nothing without Yah. So, and I'm hoping that it's making sense that you get what I'm trying to, you know, say uh, to you. And, but, but it's just reality. It's just real. Um, we got to really learn to trust Yah more. And, and the reason I'm I, 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 I'm even able to talk to you about this is because I realize this in myself. You know what I mean, saints? I really do. And especially, you know, yesterday, Pastor was talking about, you know, how we need to uh, really build ourselves up in our most holy faith, you know, building ourselves up in the spiritual realm. I mean, that's just true. Um, it's easier to get lax than to get uh, just complacent and, and not really realizing the condition, uh, how fall we're, we're falling. You know, but it's so important that we, we find the time, we make the time, saints, you know, to draw nigh unto Yah um, and, and really, truly get close to him. Um, it's it's very it's a scary thing 
to try to live this life, knowing now what I know, living it and trying to do it without y'all. It, it really is. I feel it. If ever I stray for any amount of time, it's it, it's, it's evident. I mean, it can, it can feel it. It's a scary, daunting thing to try to, you know, to see the thought of it, just the thought of, you know, going any further without y'all, being without him. Scary is dark. It's a, it's a, it's a vicious world out there. And Satan is doing everything he can. You know, we see what he's doing to the world. Satan, see, you know, he's coming after you because of what you're doing, and especially you uh, attacking his kingdom. You know, he got to hit out for you. But that's the even the reason more why you, you know should be running hard. You know, you should be really keeping yourself in the love of Yah, staying rooted and grounded. Um, you know, to especially to this ministry, because I mean, there's not another ministry putting it out like this. Be honest, which can be real, and that's the reason why I always say that I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful that y'all uh, brought me here, because I, there was a point where I had to make a decision on where I was going to go. It was either one of these camps, or, or it was either straightway. You know, either I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna listen to Pastor Dow. Or I'm gonna just go over there. You know, I I I'll be honest with you, my flesh man liked it the way some of these guys the way they were teaching. And, and, you know, in a fleshly, mindly, carnal way, it was kind of appealing. You know, it was kind of something that, oh, man, I would like to do that. I would like to be a part of that. But then I had Pastor Dow on the other end, just crying out, just screaming, just roaring, you know, just hitting it, hitting that 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 that, that man, that, that inner man, you know, going after that heart. And, and you know how it is. You know, the flesh don't want that. No, nah, the flesh want what's comfortable, what's convenient, you know. The thing that, you know, will, will puff you up and make you appear to be more than what you really are and to not really deal with the real issues, the real man. But I had to make a decision. And you know what? As much as my flesh wanted to go, y'all had another plan for me. And so that's why I'm always saying that I'm grateful and I'm thankful to be here. Straight way true. And that you all, I call you all my brothers. I call you all my sisters. I call you my family. Because at the end of the day, I could not run away from that voice. Ain't that right? The sheep know y'all's voice, man. And another day, they, they, they're not going to deal with that. They're not going to entertain that. So I had to hearken. I really did. I had to make a decision. But, you know, it's one of those things, saints, it's, it's, uh, that's going on in the world. And, it's, you know, I had a little bit of insight. On this, because being away from it um, was really happening in the world, like like in the midst of it, kind of really uh, don't get a, a chance to know what's going on. But anyway, what happened was my wife got a call from uh, uh, someone that she knew back when she was out in the world, who she actually ministered to, and it's actually the same lady that Pastor Al even mentioned it once. He said, you know, this this lady she was listening at one time. You know, she was trying to follow what was going on with the ministry and everything, and then she left off, dropped off, and then she tried to come back, and then she could not understand. She couldn't comprehend nothing. She's like, man, Pastor, I was on a whole other level. I mean, do you understand what he's saying? And my wife was like, yeah, I follow clearly what was going on. But since this sister had been gone away, she had no clue what's been going on, what has happened spiritually had taken place. And so just as recently, she gave uh, my wife a call again and my wife was just telling me about it, you know, and it made me reflect on how the, the sick condition of this world. She basically said that, you know, she, you know, the, the mindset of this, and the, to the point she's so far gone now that she's taking a position that, you know, hey, we all are gods. We all are, um, as long as we do right to others and, you know, we, we do the right thing and we, we're good and, you know, there's no hell. You know, this is the, the sentiment. This is the mentality of the people in the world. You know, everybody's doing that which is right in their own eyes because there's no king. Just like in the days in Israel, you know, where there was no king. I mean, people did whatever they want. And because people would not hearken to the law of Yahweh, because they uh, rejected, this is the sad condition of people right now. Everybody is a god, all right? Everybody can do whatever they want. In this life, as long as you purpose in your heart, you're doing good. How do you know that you're doing good? 
What gives you, what instructions you have to follow, to lead you, to guide you? What do you have to tell you that you're doing wrong? Because for the, 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 to be real, you know our hearts are wicked, saints. They are wicked. And whatever we can do, convince ourselves, whatever little saying, whatever little quote, whatever little thing we can do to appease our own conscience, to make us think that we're doing the right thing, we're going to accept that over any kind of uh, law that is uh, against, you know, what, what the flesh want to do. So in other words, if I purpose in my heart and I say, you know what, if I go out and I feed the homeless all the time and I, I, I'm nice to people, I don't get into confrontations with people, I'm okay with homosexuals, I'm okay with their lifestyle as long as they don't bother me. Hey, they have to live as well, you know. God loves them too. Really. And if I take that type of position, man, you know, I'll be in a world of trouble. I'm going after my own book of the law. And that's the same thing that's going on out in the world right now. And it's happening in, 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 in record numbers. This is the way Satan is deceiving the people. People think they need to unlock that inner self, that inner, that inner you, the awakening of you, that God in you. Man, that is straight demonic, satanic. That is a, a body without, that's that fallen state, the fallen man that the pastor was talking about. That is a sad place to be. But the thing about it, that is the way this world is. Satan has blinded the minds of the people. And so whatever they feel that is right in their own eyes, they are doing it. But what one to you, Israel, if you take a position like that? And no, you may not say those words. You may not even do some of the things that they're doing. But when you reject the word coming forth, when you reject it, you're saying in your heart, Man, there's no y'all. You know, I could do whatever I want as long as I'm doing good to us. You got that same mentality, the same thing is in you. If you reject it, if you, you, you turn your back from it, from correction, from, from judgment, from hearing these words, if you don't even fight against the kingdom, man, you know you're in agreement with that, John? You're in agreement with all of that. And that's a dangerous place to be because you're making yourself an enemy of y'all. But that's the condition of the world around us, saints. That's what's going on, and this happening. I mean, people are they're damn near almost to the point that they're, they're ready. They're ready to receive uh, the Antichrist. I mean, it's probably far worse than I could even imagine or, or that we even know. Because, I mean, we see it. We're not blind to it. But it's just a bad place. But it's not. it shouldn't be for us, Israel. That's not for us. Uh, we look at Genesis, right? Genesis chapter 5. Um, excuse me, Genesis chapter Six. I got to get there. Here we go. Genesis chapter six, starting verse five here, and it says, "And Yah saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart." You get that? It said the imagina- every imagination of the thoughts of his heart. That's getting deep down in there, man. That's, that's, that's it. That's no room for hiding, none whatsoever. Yah knew the condition of man during that time. And it goes on to say that it was only evil continually. I mean, continually, that's all that was in the heart of man. And you know if that's in the heart, then that's going to come out. That's going to be manifest in a, in, a, in a natural sense, and, you know. And that's the same condition of this world today, the same condition. You know, it's a sad thing. Well, here I am working, right, this past six days, and I try to keep a positive a vibe when I, when I enter into the place, all right, because I already know what I'm up against, gloomy, it's, you know, people that don't have no hope. It's just uh, murmuring and complaining. It's just one of those type of environments. So we get there for our morning meetings and everything. Supervisor, you know, we try to greet everybody and ask, how's everybody doing? Do you know they don't have the decency to say a word? And so I always yell. I always yell. I do it. I be like, I'm great, you know, or something like that with a loud uh, response. 
Because it's rude to just sit there, as we're being taught. It's rude to just sit there and not say a word when, when somebody greets you. They don't have to ask about our well-being. And even if it's just routine, so what? It's just a fact. So every day I try to I, I make a, a habit of doing that. Because the reason I do that, thanks, is this, because I'm charged to be the light of the world. I'm charged to be the salt of the earth, all right? And it's not up to me to let my environment dictate my mood or my uh, outlook on things. Nah, I'm only passing through. I'm looking past all of this stuff. So it's up to me to bring, to change that atmosphere when I get there. And I'm going to just show you how, you know, the thoughts of man are just so wicked, you know, and, 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 and nothing good comes from it. Sometimes I'm like, all right, fine, we finish with the meeting and uh, we go on to do our jobs, right? Put our stations and work. And so I, I noticed the guy to the right of me, and, you know, I could tell his spirit just wasn't right. And I knew it. And I began to pray right there against anything he may have been thinking or, or whatever the case is, sending all that back because I felt that it was strong. You, you, you know that feeling. You know what's going on. Um, when Satan is working uh, in someone, using them. And so I continued to work, ignoring it. And then eventually it happened. And I knew it. I knew it was coming. I knew it, it was inevitable. He was going to either say something or do something to try to vex me. So this is what he said. He said, so what are you trying to do, man? What what, what, what you doing, man, in those meetings in the morning? What, what, what's your point? What you doing? So I said, what you mean, man? What you talking about? And he said, well, you know how you yell? And, yeah. He said, why you do that, man? You, you encouraging him. He said, you know what you should say? You should say, man, F you, man. Don't, don't worry about how the F I'm doing. I'm like, ho, ho, ho. I immediately, I just laughed. The reason I laughed, I didn't laugh because it was funny what he said. I laughed because I knew it was coming. I knew Satan was going to try to do something to try to, to try to you know, to vex me or to test me or to see where I would go with that. And I just laughed, man, and just went back and continued to work. Because there's no sense in trying to, you know, get through to certain people. I mean, it's just not. But I, I just, I laughed because, man, look at look at the way people think. There's nothing positive that comes out of their heart. Nothing whatsoever. Nothing but evil. But saints, we are charged, man. We are charged to be the salt of the earth. And I'm not saying all that just to tell you my story, to give you know a boring story, but I'm just trying to show you, you know, how far off people are gone. People can't even think themselves happy. And it'll be a shame if you are that person who I'm speaking about. If that's the way you carry yourself. If you allow your the environment that you walk into to dictate the way you uh, uh, go on about your day or the way you interact or the way you think, that's a bad thing. You are charged, saints, to be the salt of the earth. You are charged to be the light of the world. But just as it was in those days, uh, saints, I mean, it's the same thing that's going on in the world around us. But the hope is this, that saints, we have, uh, our hope is in Yeshua, hallelujah. We don't have to live a life of sin. He's already paid the price for us. All we need to do is just walk in it. Walk in it. Many of you have come, you've been delivered, you've been set free of things. Walk in that deliverance. Strive hard not to pick up those same habits. Try this year to do things that you only imagine or only see others doing. The things in which, you know, that cause you to feel like you're left out of place or like you're not, you know, you're lacking or, or why am I not receiving the blessings of Yah? Make a point to do that these, this year, a change, to do something that you've never done before. It's all about you, saints. But, but mm-hmm. only a fool said in his heart that there is no Yah. Only a fool said that, saints. And as I said earlier, you may not say it with your mouth, but in your heart, when you reject and you despise, um, you know, all that Yah's putting forth for us, bringing forth, he's, he's making it so plain and so clear for us in this, in this day and hour, saying that there's no reason for excuses anymore whatsoever. You know, when we were in Christianity, when we were lost in the world, you know, we didn't really have any guidelines. We didn't have no restrictions. You know, things were very abstract. And and just as I said, whatever we thought in our minds or we did it, that was fine. We went about it, no problem. But we can't live after that same uh, manner of life, uh, being in this faith. There are rules, guidelines, instructions, and things that we must 
adhere to. Hallelujah. But the whole thing about today's message, thanks to this um, in a nutshell, is to really humble ourselves. So it's all about to abase ourselves, humble ourselves before the mighty hand of Yah. Go before the throne of grace, uh, saints, with, with humility, but boldly with humility. Hallelujah. Learning from the from our ancients, uh, how, how they abased themselves. Like King David, I always use him. Because I know, I see the man, how he was a humble man. I, I saw this early on, man. This man was humble, man. No doubt we saw how courageous he was. And a warrior, a true warrior. Straight fighter, just born for it. But he loved Yah from an early age. And he trusted in Yah. Put his trust in Yah. Glory to the King. Um, read a few things here and uh, just wrap it up. Um, that's, that's what I have for you, saints, tonight. Um, I just really want Israel to be encouraged, uh, you know, as you go forward uh, this new year. Um, just making this one of the ones, uh, you know, a pivotal one uh, for each and every last one of us. I'm going to go ahead and I'm read from Psalm, uh, excuse me, Proverbs here. Proverbs chapter 3. Glory to the king. Hallelujah. Let this make it sense and get something out of the saints. Let's see where we at. Proverbs 3. Let's start at verse 7. Proverbs 3 and 7 it says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor Yahweh with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Hallelujah. My son, despise not the chastening of Yahweh Neither be weary of his correction. For when Yahweh loveth, he correcteth. Even as the father, the son, in whom he delighted. Hallelujah. So now I'm going to go to Galatians 7 and 8. And it says, Be not deceived. Yah is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Glory to the king. One more here, saints. And this is Luke, all right, Luke 12. We we'll start at verse 33 here. Yeah. All right, just bear with me. I'm going to go down to 48. And it says, listen to this real clear. It says, Luke 12, 33 says, Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And you yourselves, like unto men that wait, or their master when he returned from the wedding. That when he cometh and knock it, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. 
And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this now, excuse me, and this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be you therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Glory to the King. Hallelujah, saints. I'm going to go ahead and continue reading. Then Peter said unto him, Master, speaketh thou this parable unto us or even to all? It's a question. And the Master said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward? whom his master shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But and if that servant say in his heart, my master delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maid servants, and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The master of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in a sun in thunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his master's will and prepared not himself neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much of him they will ask for more. Glory to the King. Thanks. Hallelujah. It's the Elder Donnie here. I am signing off for this edition of Block Talk Radio, uh, Straight with Truth on Block Talk Radio. Um, just praying for you, saints, that you are constantly, constantly um, keeping yourselves in a ready state. Hallelujah. That you're encouraged. That you're fighting this good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Realizing the, you know, the goal, the end result. And it's not on the things that are of this, this, this world, the things that are temporal, but on things that are not seen, which things are eternal. Uh, y'all have a wonderful, blessed week. Don't be influenced by this wicked world. Stand firm on, on y'all's word. Uh, remember the word and the spirit, they agree. Hallelujah. So we are not a people that are lost, that don't have instructions, that don't have guidelines, that don't have Yah nigh unto us. He's not far away, as though some may say, or where is he, or who is he? We know exactly who he is. Each and every last one of you who has tasted the goodness of Yah, who have experienced uh, his goodness, who have been brought out of darkness uh, into his marvelous light, you know. And so I want all of y'all to be encouraged. Always, as always, I say pray for one another. Pray for our, our beloved pastor. Pray for all of your leaders. Uh, reach out to a brother or a sister. See how they're doing. Give them a call. You know, um, it's very important. You know, that came up uh, yesterday, unity as, as, uh, as a whole. Uh, we need to, you know, just look out for one another a little bit better than what we're doing. As Pastor mentioned on yesterday, be careful, careful, you know, when you are entertaining strangers because you never know who you are um, dealing with. It could, be, it could be entertaining an angel unaware. So hallelujah. Don't allow nobody to steal your joy. Don't allow nobody to vex you. Fight against Satan's kingdom. Remember the Apostle Paul, how he uh, took pleasure in his infirmities because he knew uh, those were weaknesses. Relied on Yah. Remember King David, how he, everything that he did, he, he relied on Yah for being his strength and remembered and acknowledged Yah for being his strength. And he trusted in Yah, and he was blessed for it. And you as well. We all are going to be blessed for it. But we need to keep Yah at the forefront of our lives trusting in him with all our heart, and leaning not to our own understanding. Hallelujah. Thanks, y'all. Be encouraged. Bless y'all.
And uh, thank you all. The king is coming. Hallelujah. Bless y'all. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Uh-oh, look at him looking.